So this vlog episode is going to be talking and walking through uh, the Percival Provost, which is a bit more interesting and a bit bigger and heavier and more complicated than any of the aircraft I've walked around previously, which is why Simon's going to help. Um, so Simon, tell me a bit more about the, the Provost. Uh, so the Provost was built by the Percival Company in uh, the 1950s to replace the Prentice as a uh, training aircraft for the uh, Royal Air Force. Uh, it was used for as a basic trainer before uh, RAF pilots would have gone on to fly the um, Vampire uh, and it was designed to um, be a side-by-side -side trainer to uh, make it easier for the instructors to see what the students were doing in the, um, the aircraft. It's probably not a bad idea rather than continuing to smack them around the back of the head which I think they historically did with yeah. things like the chipmunk didn't <laughs> they? So yeah, so how long ago um, did it sort of uh, go out of service and stuff? What replaced it? So they were built in the 1950s, it was built in 19... 55 this one and the um, most the Provost finally went out of service as an air traffic control trailer in about 1969 at RAF Shawbury. Air traffic control trainers so what they sent air traffickers up in them to sort No of so they flew around uh, being directed by air traffic control trainee air traffic controllers because oh, it was okay. the so days of so computer were... simulation and all of that sort of stuff so they would fly radar patterns and stuff under the control of trainee, um, radar, uh, trainee air traffic controllers. Oh, okay, fair enough. Didn't realise yeah. they, they did that. So the aircraft was replaced by the Jet Provost uh, in later service and uh, the first Jet Provost was pretty much uh, one of these with the uh, the radial engine taken off and a rounded nose and then a jet engine put in the middle of the fuselage. It wasn't a tail wheel though, was it? it wasn't they, a tail did they wheel. stick a nose wheel on they the front put, of they, it as well? They put a nose wheel on the front. Blimey, so it's it doesn't look much like a jet, does it? But <laughs> <laughs> but it's what it what it became. So yeah, um, what does she fly like then? Well, I've done I've done a few hours in her now. I've been very fortunate to sort of be allowed to to take control and sort of um, fly her around a bit. And in my mind, she's a bit like a, a chipmunk on steroids, really. Um, what would you would you concur or do you yeah, have so other views? Yeah, so the yeah the province is just like a massive chipmunk. It handles really really well. It's comparable in size to Harvard, maybe a little bit lighter, it's just under 2,000 kilos, um, but it's actually a little yeah, bit nicer to, to handle in a Harvard, it's less heavy, and the, the controls yeah. are a little bit better harmonised, it's just not got quite as good performance uh, as the Harvard does, it's a little bit slower and it's uh, quite a bit draggy. Um, this, what's it like to display? Uh, it's a lot of fun, uh, it's a real privilege to display because it's pretty unique, there's only a, uh, a handful of these uh, around the world, um, only two or three of them airworthy in the UK at the moment. Um, so yeah. this one's been displayed a few, quite a bit over the years. This is the one that most people will have seen on the um, UK display flying circuit, flown in the hands of various pilots, including myself. Um, so yeah, it's been really good fun to fly. Yeah, um, gonna, we're going to miss it, aren't we? She's for sale at the moment, yeah, but so, um, so sadly, well, hopefully she'll stay in the UK, fing fingers crossed, but um, we're certainly going to miss her when she goes. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I've managed to climb up the um, mountain that is the Provost to have a look in the cockpit now, and Simon's going to have a bit of a talk through what's going on with with this aeroplane. She's got an interesting old beast, isn't she? I mean, uh, big old engine up front. Yeah, so it's an Elvis Leonides uh, Mark 25, nine cylinder uh, radial engine, 550 horsepower with a variable pitch uh, propeller. Proper in English engine as well, isn't it? Yeah. English aeroplane, English engine, which yeah. is quite British. part of the reason she's so rare. Big British, cumbersome, unergonomic. Over-engineered, over <laughs> beautiful, beautiful flying machine. So yeah, I mean the cockpit you've got full dual controls um, and lots of different sort of systems going on to make life as complicated as possible for the trainees. I think. Okay, so the main thing that's different to most um, light aircraft that most people fly are the pneumatics. Um, so the brakes are operated pneumatically and the um, flaps are operated pneumatically. So the brakes on a lever uh, on the um, front of the control column, uh, and when you depress that and move the rudder bar at the same time, it'll. Um, give you differential braking to the direction that you move the rudder bar if you've got a central it'll brake the aircraft um, straight ahead. Which sounds sensible but it's hideous in reality. It's, uh... Yeah so <laughs> unlike hydraulic brakes they don't react instantly there's a little bit of lag so whenever you uh, apply the brake you need to anticipate uh, before applying it or releasing it otherwise you uh, will end up chasing your tail. So it's great just very elevated position you know sort of probably about eight feet off the ground when you're sat up here. You have um, a bit of a presence at an airfield don't you definitely. sort of when you arrive it's sort of people know you've arrived Anyway, but yeah, there we go. That is the Percival Roberts.